Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you very much. Uh, after today's meeting, <laughs> um, it, it did soak up my energy a little bit. I have had a bit of a bitter chocolate, so it kind of boosts up my energy levels a little bit more. So, yeah. Good. <laughs> I mean, it's all good business, so it's all Definitely. beneficial. Definitely. 100%. So, today's topic, as we mentioned earlier, we will be talking about um, how to start of a project. Yes. Now, as a musician, or well, shall I say former musician, because I do oh. not make music anymore, <laughs> but uh, I, do, I, do, I do bits and bops here and there, I'm not going to lie, just contribution towards the music industry, you know, a bit of ghost producing and stuff like that, but yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> as a former musician or a current musician, whatever you say, um, I believe, in my opinion, there are multiple ways of starting off a project. But I would like you to go first and tell me, as a as a lyricist, as a writer, how do you start off a musical project first? Like you said, it, there's so many different ways. And to be honest, it always usually depends on where your head is at in that current moment in time. Um and the thing is with a lot of songwriters and producers, it feels like starting the song is the most daunting, the most scariest part of actually writing a song. Um, but if anything, if you have a good idea, it comes so naturally and so quickly as well. And everyone that's ever created a project knows that, like when you get an idea, it flows and it flows quick and so I would say that it's more about where you are in, in that, I guess, headspace. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree, actually. I yeah. would definitely agree with that. Um, like we both said, definitely depends. It depends on the person and their mind frame, the current mind frame at the time of starting the project. But um, I do also know that there are um, certain producers that will not go out of line with the way of um, them starting uh, starting off a project. So one of those, which is um, starting off with the bass line, or some of them are starting off with drums. Yeah. Or another one is starting off with the melody. Yeah. Or another one is starting off with the sample. Yeah. Find, find a royalty-free sample, chop it up, create something totally new out of it, and then find the key and blah, blah, blah and go ac according to that. Or some people just start off with a a cappella sample and vice versa. So there are a lot of ways of starting off a project. Um, in my opinion, for all the musicians out there, my ultimate advice would be to start off the way you feel the most comfortable. Whatever accelerates your creativity whatever enhances your creativity, if, if it's starting off with drums or if it's finding a sample or if it's even using a MIDI, go, I, if I bought a MIDI pack for $60. It comes with like 15,000 MIDIs in there. You can, look, the idea of a MIDI uh, package is basically what it is. These are already written melodies. Mm -hmm. What you do is you put it on a sampler or you, you put it on a sampler, you then change the sounds in it. Or you can, sorry, my bad, not a sampler. You put it on a MIDI channel and then you change the sounds. Yeah. So let's just say I have a, um, um, I, I, I open up a, a MIDI, MIDI channel and I, I shove the um, MIDI sample that I bought in this packet in there. And then what, what I do is I open up another channel. Uh, it's a synthesizer. Let's just say, for example, for the argument's sake, um, Serum BSD plugin. I put, I, I open up a sound and then I get that um, MIDI from the MIDI channel and then I copy and paste into that channel. Mm -hmm. what, I can, what I can do is yeah. get the MIDI directly put in the synthesizer, whatever, same thing, all works. And then um, I then start flicking through the sounds according to the genre I'm producing. Let's just say we found the sound, we got the MIDI all set, all good. What you can then do is to, just like, just like you are sampling, you can switch the MIDI 
you can take that part, edit here, get rid of that part, get that one, edit here until it makes sense. Yeah. But then don't forget, it shouldn't be the same because that pack is bought by many people. So chances are someone's going to use the same MIDI. Yeah. You know what I mean? So exactly. the more you play around with it, more creative you get, the better results you're going to get. And obviously, it's less likely someone's going to be able to imitate what you came up with. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, everyone has their their main way or a few main ways that they'll start writing a project. And from there, all these ideas seem to flow and it feels natural to them. And I completely agree with you. It's like stick with that. But also never be afraid to try out something different because that new way of trying could inspire your best ideas. Um, and like you said, just like tr experiment with different sounds and different lyrics and just different things that you've not done before and try and incorporate that into your work because you don't know. And especially as an artist, you are constantly, even the biggest artists today that have been going for decades, even they are still discovering what their sound is, what their new sound is for mainstream market, what they can sell, but also what feels right to them. Exactly. So it's constantly experimenting with current sounds and ideas because that's how your artist sound comes. It's not by just focusing on the small amount of ideas and that you have in a, in a little box. It's trying out all these different things. It really is. Exactly. I agree with that. Yeah. What else would you say would be a good way of starting up a new project? Let's just say, let's just say this. Um, you are going through, we talked about this in one of our previous podcasts, but you are, you are going through this phase called writer's block. Mm. What would you do to be able to enhance your creativity, therefore, to start off a new project? Um, the biggest thing would be to have a, a logbook or just have your your notes and i'm going to say something that's very different to probably what other mentors or whatever would advise um just don't write phrases and long lines and all these huge ideas onto your phone or recorded because when you do come back to that there's not much creativity to go from there it's very locked in on that that idea that you already have because it's already kind of formed itself. So the best thing to do is write down keywords. Um, and this could be part of a title. It could be um, the first word of the chorus or the verse, things like that. And same like with, with every creative aspects. If you're a vocalist, you record a, maybe um, just a very short melodic line using your vocals on your phone and you don't need to title it but just make sure you kind of know what it is same with producers you know just tap a beat using a pen and <laughs> whatever it's to keep it as minimal as possible so that when you do go back to it there's so much creativity that you can do with it and that's when all the doors open i agree with that yeah definitely i agree with that let's um let's say this um completely out of topic yeah um we would like to make a small advertisement which we don't do <laughs> well actually we've never done before now we are <laughs> now we are doing it um diverse beats promo is going hand in hand with sound space sound space um in correlation uh with um hooray network so all of these businesses are colliding under the same um, roof to be able to provide a massive platform for musicians from all around the world to come under and join forces and gain back the power of their uh, music. So um, you heard this here first. Don't forget that. And more announcements will be coming in the forthcoming, forthcoming weeks. So stay tuned, definitely. Um, anything you would like to add to that? Um, just how excited I am at the fact that every company is so unique in its own way, but the way they form together 
it complements the music industry as a whole, as a whole. Like you've got everything that you need right there in yeah. order to really succeed. And not only that, but make your own money. So it's, it really is a win-win. 100%. Yeah. Okay, back to our topic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that, but, but it had to be done because we are working on all these projects. So it had to be, they had to be mentioned to be able to gather more momentum around the projects. Yeah, I have um, a question for you for this topic. Please. Um, what do you feel is something that stops your creativity when you do go to start a new project? Ah, that's a good one, actually. <laughs> that, that's a very good one. Um, having my phone facing towards me. So what I do is I don't leave my phone facing. I, I always put it upside down so I don't see the notifications. Yeah. Don't want to direct my focus on my screen and on my monitors so I can hear and listen and watch. Another one is closing all the web browsers. I don't need no distractions. I need to focus on this. This is where my attention span needs to be for the next hour or so, or whatever, half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever your attention span is, it has to be directed at this, this, this screen and these monitors until you feel, okay, cool, my ears are full now, so I can give a break quick and I come back. And those two are crucial and vitally important in my opinion. So um, those two, I always definitely do. Um, mm -hmm. To be able to keep myself um, motivated and kickstart of a project, if I'm going to start from scratch, if I'm not remixing a song, and if it's not for a client, I'm just going to do music for myself purely, which is what I always do. Yeah. Um, if I'm lacking any, any ideas, which doesn't happen often, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> if, if one of those rare moments is present, I go and listen to some samples that I downloaded previously. I'm not going to give the name of the website. Everyone knows it, but I just can't do it. It, it, it goes against the company policy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, uh, I just go through a bunch of samples. I download it and I see if any if I come across to anything that's that that inspires me. Mm -hmm. And if if I come across to something that inspires me, I grab that sample, I find its key, I find the BPM, and then I decide what I can do with it. And then the show starts, <laughs> it goes off, and then within a matter of a couple of hours, I have a outline yeah yeah so joe you know what's funny is tell me the thing that um helps you be the most creative is the opposite for me so oh. yeah uh, which is quite funny and this is how i guess being a creative person it, it works because you realize that everyone is so different uh -huh. so if i was to say to myself right i'm not going to look at my phone i'm going to shut this off like nothing's open on my laptop apart from logic that stops my creative flow because oh, serious yeah because i get my creativity from what is going on around me so i yeah so i could see you know something outside or i could hear something outside and maybe i hear a couple have an argument or something like that and i get like the topic idea or a notification on my phone I, I see a word and that brings an idea to me or i got the tv on in the background and i hear a melody from a sync track you see what I mean it's all these different things I pick out um that I can just throw onto onto a project that's actually crazy but it's very good I like it but it just shows like that it. everyone works so different and that's why I love this kind of I guess what I do um because it's fascinating just seeing how people's minds work when it comes to putting a project together it's so different it's so so different <laughs> 100% I agree with that. I, I don't, I mean, I, we talked about it earlier on the call. And if you remember, Lucas just attacked me like, oh, no limitations. I'm like, cool, bro. Like, I didn't suggest that there should be, you know, I didn't suggest that there should be any limitations, but you know, it is what it is. Like, my man just told me, like, listen, no limitations, cool. 
I just presented an idea, mm -hmm. which goes to show, look, my idea at the time was limited and I take that on board. My friend, love all, all the love and respect to Lucas, great businessman. I look up to him and I'm looking to learn from him a lot. He knows what he's talking about. Massive respect. Yeah. So my guy gets goes to me. No, that's completely wrong. Irrelevant. We don't we don't need no limitations. Therefore, da, 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 da. I'm like, cool. I respect that 100. percent So like you said as well, there should not be any limitations. Um, I I work like that. Doesn't mean everyone should work work the same. You know what I mean? You work completely different. X Y Z person works completely different, and I am all in with that. This just it's just. This is what works for me. I am a different person. I shut down everything. I focus on this bloody screen and say, cool, let's go. And I go, you know. Yeah. And so the, the funny, a funny story is uh, when I was at university, um, my songwriting teacher, he, the way he taught songwriting was, I didn't know at the time, but was everything that I'm against now. So, Limited. yeah, so for instance, um, because it was, I guess, like a, a beginner class uh, back then, it like his way of teaching would be, right, you should always start with a title, always have your title ready to go, um, and always make sure you have the exact title in the chorus. And already there, that alone has just, put a full stop on your creativity. And the funniest story is that I ended up working for his label. <laughs> so I <w> <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> but the, the funny thing is that um, I ended up becoming an, uh, an A&R for the label, <clears throat> the publishing label that he worked at. And when it came to him sending submissions, it was a very kind of, I don't know how to approach it at the start, but. As I eased into it and eased into the role, um, I would just say to myself, you know what, I'm doing my job. This is what I do. I'm going to tell him um, that I feel like the creativity on the song is very limited and it's very kind of, it's very static. There's, mm. there's not much going on. Like it's very, it's too structured um, to the point where there's no emotion there. And then when I sat down with him, I, it's very ballsy of me, I, I would, I'll admit, um, I'd say to him, I remember when you would teach, like, just do the title alone. And I'd say to him, it didn't feel right to me. So I did experiment in a different way. And I said to him, try this different way and just let me know how it goes. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. No problem. We, at least we said we tried it. And a couple of weeks later, he took on my advice and one of the songs ends up being pitched to a really an amazing UK artist so the amazing thing at the start he wasn't sure about trying a different strategy because it was scary to him because that's always what he's done but that's what makes a great songwriter when you get out of your box um, and you do something different even if it's someone that you feel like shouldn't be giving you advice still try it take it on board and see exactly. what happens so but, Go on. No, go ahead. Go ahead. One question. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Is isn't that what we always do? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Wait, I'm gonna. I'm, I haven't finished. Isn't isn't what? Uh, uh, don't we always put the title of the podcast first and then follow alongside? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we're basically doing what your teacher did. Pretty much, yeah. But Fuck. it's funny that we, we kind of. <laughs> We incorporate in everything and we don't realize. So you saying that, maybe from now on, we'll say, cool, let's just put it on record and just have a chat, see where it goes. Exactly what's going to happen from now on. Exactly. So uh, that's what I love about us is that we say to each other, oh, we like this isn't working. Let's try this. Cool, straight away. Always try. try. If it doesn't work, fuck it. It doesn't work. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. now, who's, who's to stop you from experimenting? Tell me that. Exactly. Is there a handbook that's saying you cannot experiment on such topics? Is not is not allowed and it is therefore forbidden. Fuck no. <laughs> Go ahead and try. You know what I mean? I mean, yes, there is a book out there, or loads of books, I'm sure, um, about 
um, how to become a successful songwriter, something like that. That's probably the exact title of the book. Um, but I remember reading that and studying what, the book. What was the title? Um, I think <laughs> it's something along the lines of like, like how to be a successful, successful songwriter or how to write your first hit, something like that. And I would read it in a way that it was like, like I was the I was Jesus and I was reading the Bible. <laughs> like I was really studying it. And oh me not <laughs> <laughs> inspiration. <laughs> oh, I, I totally understand what you mean. I resonate with what you said. <laughs> but like when I look back, like that book was so structured, and I don't say this in a good way. It was too structured. Like mm. creativity, mm. anything to do with creativity should never ever be structured. Yeah, there should be a, a verse, a chorus, a drop, whatever. But it's still like freedom, freedom, people. Come on. That's it. So it, the the book was written in a way where the freedom of the future songwriters was taken away in the first place. Yeah, and you know what the funny thing is, is because I was so wrapped up in this book and what it said, that alone stopped my creativity. And I know you don't believe in writer's block and all that stuff, but I didn't write for about a year after I read that book because I was so stuck on, it needs to be like this, it needs to sound like that. I can't do it that way. My creativity is gone. So that means what you read took away from me instead of contributing towards you. Yeah, fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> so we should definitely pay attention to what kind of information we are consuming day in, day out. Not just books, but videos that we watch and um, the articles that we read and so on and so forth. Yeah. Would you agree? 100%. And I always say this is if you want to exceed your writing goals and your tracks, it's listen to the artists that have already done it. Listen to your favorite artists by gaining inspiration from them and analyzing their songs so you can see how it became successful rather than a book from someone that's probably never even listened to a song in their life. You know, it's just... <laughs> so who, who wrote the book then? Oh, I can't remember. It was years ago, probably a decade ago. So do you think it was someone famous or do you think it was someone that made it in the music industry or do you think some it was someone that... Because in my opinion, it was someone that was trying to take the revenge, <laughs> take, take a revenge from the music industry, but uh, fuck you guys, I didn't make it, so I'm going to fuck all of you guys up. No one's going to make it. Whoever reads this book going to be fucked. <laughs> You're all going down with me. Fuck you. Exactly. If I'm going down, you coming down with me, bro. That's it. End of the story. Done. You know what? I think, um, in complete honesty, I think it was someone that had maybe two hits in the 80s. And as we all know, the songwriting process... For- <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like him to me. I don't know. Yeah. Sing the same song today, 2020. 2022, I'm sorry. I'm glad we got this recorded so I can take that. <laughs> I don't understand. I still see him around here and they're still singing the same fucking song. Like, dude, get a fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> I love the song. Don't get me wrong. He's, listen, I'm, I was born in the 80s. I'm not going to say, yes, I'm an 80s baby. I was born in 1985. I fit in the category. However, I did an experiment 80s music the way um, as someone that was 18 years old yeah in the 80s or not you know what i mean i didn't experience it like they did yeah however i um vaguely remember some of the songs um i was i think five six years old which which is when i first saw that song never gonna you know that and I, I love that song from that from day one yeah oh, bro please <laughs> I, I mean, let me let me correct it, bruh. <laughs> Please write something new. Yeah. You, you don't look like how you looked when you first came out with a song, yet you're still singing the same song. I don't rate you anymore. Yeah, it's like Tim I mean, Westwood, isn't it? <laughs> huh? Tim Westwood, isn't it? <laughs> he is literally come on. Uh, cracks me up. <laughs> Come on, what is wrong with you, man? I mean, look, I respect anyone and everyone with or without an opinion. You done something spectacular back in the day. You brought it all the way to 2022. 
let's just say it's almost a 40-year-old 40, 40 piece of gold. Yeah. And you are still collecting royalties for it. I know, you know, everyone knows. With all the respect, please, <laughs> stop making a fool out of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it looks funny. I watched him, I think I watched him a couple of years ago. Um, he was doing a, um, and he, he was an opening act for a show. I forgot, I'm not going to lie. As, as old as he looks, he looked after himself quite well. I respect that. Again, I'm not downgrading the guy. Yeah. But to a point where it's like, you know, you are being taken the piss out of on many commercials. Mm. But Bumblebee movie, have you watched? No, I haven't. <laughs> oh, my God. Bumble, Bumblebee movie, 2018. The girl, little American girl, discovers Bumblebee as a... Volkswagen, Beetle, Yellow, takes it to his um, parents' garage, starts fixing it, finds out it's a fucking robot. The Bumblebee becomes turned... The girl gives the um, car electric and then becomes turns into Bumblebee, so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. Two twos, the girl tries to um, fix the way Bumblebee talks, which he can't. He can't talk anymore because the way he talked, the mechanism that, that allowed him to talk was taken away in a, in a previous war. So he starts putting cassette tapes inside Bumblebee. Yeah. The minute she puts that, she puts the cassette tape of that song, never gonna make you cry, never gonna let you down, blah, blah, blah. The Bumblebee spits it out. <laughs> it was like, take the shit away from me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is the kind of joke. That it's, <laughs> look, he got royalties, he got placement money for that small part in that movie. He, he milked it. Even into that 2018, he milked it. Respect. But do you remember and, when it was years ago? I think it was even when YouTube was actually starting to come about. Like, this is kind of showing how old I am now. <laughs> but on every song, every um, video or most videos, people would joke around by putting a snippet of Rick Ross in there. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> remember that. Like your friends will send you like a song, be like, oh, check this out. And it's fucking Rick Ross. And it'll be like, well, I think, is that where Rick Rolled came along? I think so, yeah. But <laughs> that guy was everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Seriously, Maybach music. Like, <laughs> literally. I respect his hustle as well. He's done quite a bit. He's done quite a bit. But at least what I respect about Rick Ross is that he done different songs yeah exactly like gazillions of them no one can never tell you what they are but <laughs> at least he's tried it <laughs> at least he's tried it yeah but this chap here one song 40 years still going strong yeah. fucking hell seriously <laughs> exactly but it's like um say for instance um michael buble you okay. know he, he hibernates for the entire year and then comes out and in Christmas and he'll sing <laughs> <laughs> and he'll sing like a very few amount of songs but that's just him everyone knows him as the, the Christmas guy I guess <laughs> I guess he is the next um at the Christmas <laughs> I guess so if he ever grows a belly a bit of a white beard done <laughs> got the song already going on I know give it a few years yeah. <laughs> Kevin said that we have now officially six months left. No, sorry, my bad. Eight months left. Ooh, let's not go there. <laughs> For Christmas. Let's not go there. People already started. You don't understand. It's a whole fucking other thing. <laughs> we'll talk about it later on. We've gone off topic so badly. But we can, we can link the topic to um, where we started with this song that I was talking about, which lasted four years, which I can't, I'm sorry, it's a famous song, but I, I can't remember the name for it to save my life. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I believe that uh, that example right there shows off not writer's block, but it, it also shows off how um, limiting yourself can actually downgrade your quality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because look, as successful as that song on, as hated and as loved as it is, 
there is no telling how long Mo is going to carry him. Or is it going to carry him? Or is he going to be taking the piss out of off, uh, again and again and again and again? It, it's, yeah. I believe there's a possible scenario, in my opinion. What is it? You know, the, the biggest fear or the biggest thing that big artists face is when they do have a very successful song or successful album because the writer's block comes from that pressure of, right, I need to top this. And so they end up writing something that's not as great as, as what they released and what was, you know, hitting the, the charts and all that. Um, and that's a huge, huge struggle. And there's just so much pressure, especially from their fans as well, or even trolls online saying, well, like, what's going to come next? Or it's going to be amazing what comes next. And already they put so much pressure on themselves. And it's, I've, I've seen it a few times with these artists that they do play a big song and they're just lost. They're so lost in the studio and it's, it's sad. It really is. But it, I, I don't blame them. I blame the team around them for putting that pressure on them as well. That is true. Um, the pressure almost comes at a limitation as well. I can tell you how. It basically means the limit here is that what you go to next create has to be a fucking masterpiece yep. it can't be one degree below it can't be average at all it has to be within that category it has to be a fucking platinum selling or gold or whatever you know what i mean it has to be within the same category that you achieve before because look success is hard to achieve yeah. but harder to maintain yeah way very harder. hard to maintain so that, that that yeah that's that's a, that's another limitation which artists i don't think all the artist teams around them should be putting on the artists oh yeah exactly but i mean i think like once you do have a, a big hit then you fuck off on holiday <laughs> that's what you do you you create new inspiration um and the the next song or that album or ep or whatever might be a little bit different to what you just released but it's true to what you want to release and that emotion will come out in the song. Um, whereas if it's a bit more static and you try and top what you just released and pretty much do a copy and paste version of your successful song, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna get the best feedback because you can listen and hear that emotion in the song. You can tell if someone had an amazing session writing that song because you can hear it, you can feel it. Same with the opposite. Do you believe having, having your very own um, formula of success created in terms of making a certain song? Let's just say you have a song that done very fucking well and you know exactly how, how you create that song by, um, by adding which elements to the equation you've managed to create that final result, which then turn around and created your amazing success um, such as money and shows and blah blah blah, fame, everything. Okay. Do you think, in your opinion, as a music, as a as a writer, there's a certain way of creating the perfect formula to create and create a hit record each and every single time? I would say yes and no because the success that you had from say one song, um, that's a very specific reason. And that specific success from that song could have come from so many different areas. So mm -hmm. say you do the exact same thing in a different song, um, the success won't be the same, um, but as long as you can implement key elements. So say you know from the previous song that you need to be in the right mindset. You need to maybe have um, a specific writers with you in the same room you need to listen to the songs that you love beforehand to gain that inspiration before you go into the session. Things like that, that's, that's um, planning, I guess, the success for, that's, for the song, for the outcome. Um, whereas I don't think it's possible to, I guess, do the exact same thing as you did previously because you will end up having less emotion there because it all comes down to the emotion that you feel in the song 
And because mm. you're just copying and paste that, you still subconsciously, you've got a bit of pressure in there. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. So success looks very, very different in so many different ways. So it's just trying out different things. No matter, if, even if you do the, the key things to help the song be successful, then there's still these small elements that might be missing that you need to try out. That's a good way of putting it through, definitely. Yeah. Definitely a good way of putting it through. Mm. Right. Anything else you would like to add? Um, I think we have, I guess, covered the main things. Anything you want to add? Um, my last words would be, for the topic itself, for the topic's sake, um, start a project the way you feel most comfortable with. Mm-hmm. That will be it. Yep, absolutely. And I would follow up and say, when you are in the right mindset, that's when you go for it. Never force yourself to write because yeah. I'll guarantee you the song will be shit, <laughs> to put it bluntly. <laughs> that's just how it is. Guaranteed. If you force yourself to do anything, if you force yourself to, I don't know, cook a three course meal for someone that you don't even like because you've got no motivation to, going to be a shit meal it's not going to taste you're going to poison the person done (laughs) get that salt (laughs) get that pepper (laughs) hey kids son of a bitch (laughs) eat eat Um, um it was it was an amazing chat as always definitely and thank you for anyone and everyone that's watching this podcast Help us get to a wider range, please, by liking and commenting to this video. And we see you guys next week. Of course. Bye-bye. Bye.